It broke while we were on the air, hit the San Francisco papers, and we talked about it. This, this lunatic breaks into her house. He's attacking the husband with a hammer. Seems to me the, the San Francisco police put out information saying a third party was in the home who answered the door, that Paul Pelosi called the cops himself from a bathroom. All sorts of speculation broke loose about whether this man was there consensually. San Francisco police then put out a tweet saying, no, only two people were in the home, Paul Pelosi and the attacker. Conspiracy theories had already taken off. You know, did they know each other? San Francisco PD saying they did not know each other. And now here we are on Monday morning where we know this guy was some lunatic. He was a lunatic. I don't know if there was a greater relationship than that, but I know this guy was a lunatic, 42 years old, part connected with some famous nudist out there who herself is a child molester who tried to kidnap a 14-year-old. I mean, like, on and on it goes. And yet the press has gone deep, dark down the rabbit hole of trying to say this is all, this is all about January 6th. Because the lunatic's latest iteration of craziness was focused on some QAnon theories and, you know, things along those lines, notwithstanding his BLM flag and his LGBTQ flag out in front of it. I mean, honestly, Senator, like, can you help us make sense of what's going on here? Well, well Megan, I write a little, about, a little bit and only the strong about how the media has become essentially the press adjunct of the Democratic Party and the progressive left in America. You see that First and most notably during the Vietnam War, when the media campaigned so aggressively against the war effort, that continues today. Um, you know, I know Elon Musk ruffled a lot of feathers, uh, you might say, on the Twitter platform by sharing a speculative article that doesn't fit with the mainstream media's story. I think what you would we'd all benefit from under these circumstances is just more transparency. Uh, they should release the 9/11 tape. They can release security yes. cam, cam, camera footage, which I'm sure the Pelosi House had. They can release body camera camera footage. Um, but the media is not inquiring about that. In the same way, for instance, that they almost never inquired about what was happening on the January 6th committee interviews. You know, we never have had transcripts of those interviews, only selective nuggets. You saw something similar during both impeachment inquiries of Donald Trump. The media's uh, famous inquisitive nature or somehow kind of disappears when they're dealing with a story that may not reflect the Democratic Party's preferred storyline. So I think the San Francisco Police Department would be well served. It would help everyone just to put out all that information. In the meantime, I wish Paul Pelosi all the best in recovering from this terrible crime, a crime that we see too much of all across America today because of soft on crime policies and failures to put mentally ill people into institutions where they can get the care they need. I feel like at a minimum, the SFPD has egg on its face because even under the most generous story to Paul Pelosi and to the, the San Francisco police, they were in the house when this guy attacked Paul Pelosi with a hammer. I'm not sure how that happened. How, how do you have police officers on site and an 82-year-old gets attacked with a hammer in front of you when you have a gun as a, as a police officer? It's one of the many questions here. As you point out, there are security cameras all over that house. You can see them from the outside where they turned on. If not, why not? She's the Speaker of the House. Far less known public figures than Nancy Pelosi have taken extra security measures in and around San Francisco, given how high the crime rate is there. It would be insane for them not to have their cameras on. And you point out the body cam, the body cam, right? So if if he walked in there and he heard something on tape or if there was a third person, which now they're saying there wasn't, again, contradicts what they initially said, let's see it. Let's see it all. I don't know what went on. I know enough to, to smell a rat. There's, there's something going on here that they're not telling us. I just don't know what it is. What's disgusting me is the media reaction. And I'll, t I'll give you this, okay? So yesterday, that was October 30th, CNN comes out with an article entitled, Why Some Democrats Are Trying a Previously Unsuccessful Strategy in a Last-Minute Campaign Push. And it talks about how they're focused on a rush of targeted ads and direct door-to-door -door outreach focused on what? Inflation, that's something they haven't tried before to try to address that. Crime, that would be new. That could help them talk about crime, convince voters like our governor in New York's trying to do last minute. She really cares about all these subway attacks and so on. No, door-to-door -door outreach focused on January 6th and the threat to democracy, uh, hoping that it can anger and scare enough of their own base and peel off still undecided voters to counter the momentum they sense moving toward the GOP. It's right there from CNN that this is the strategy to hope with a rush of it, you know, a last minute push 
to scare and anger enough of their own that January 6th is still a a threat to democracy. And the Paul Pelosi attack for them plays right into that. I don't know if we have Mika Brzezinski yet, but let me tell you, we're cutting a soundbite. I'll just read you the highlights of her this morning on MSNBC. The central political headline of this story, says Brzezinski, is that years of Republican propaganda and Trump-fueled fascism led 42-year-old David DePape to break into Nancy Pelosi's home, seemingly with the intent to harm her. The, the Chiron reads, this is courtesy of Newsbusters, how far-right demonization of Pelosi led to attack. Then Mika Brzezinski goes on, Senator. What connection? What connection? He was just deranged, right? In an isolated way. And, uh, and, and I'm trying to read my own writing. And the voters should look over here, look over here at crime. Crime is up far away from the parallels to January 6th. <laughs> uh, you know, Megan, we're hearing more and more as the election approached about the Democrats' uh, claims of being worried about threats to democracy. I think the Democrats are actually worried about threats from democracy because in eight days, the American people are going to repudiate the Democrats and their radical agenda because they can't afford food. They can't pump, fill up uh, their gas tanks at the gas pump. And they're worried about paying for their kids' braces or sports leagues or, or music concerts. They see 5 million illegals streaming across our border, bringing with them fentanyl, which is a terrible drug epidemic. So I think the Democrats are worried about threats from democracy and they're going to get repudiated by the voters next week. So in effect, they're trying to say that Republicans should simply cease all campaigning. I I mean, from everything we know about Paul Pelosi's attacker, he appears to be a deranged lunatic. I don't think that he broke into their house because John Boehner 12 years ago pointed out that Nancy Pelosi helped pass Obamacare or that Kevin McCarthy points out that Nancy Pelosi has passed $5 trillion, which led to this record high inflation. Well, not just that, but you look at the hypocrisy between the messaging now in the wake of Paul Pelosi being attacked and the guy who showed up outside of of Supreme Court Justice Brett Kavanaugh's house. And I know you're, just as a reminder to our viewers, you're an accomplished lawyer, Harvard Law School, clerk for uh, one of the U.S. Circuit Courts of Appeal, was in private practice, all of it. So you've got a legal background in addition to your time in public service. So this guy shows up outside of Supreme Court Justice Brett Kavanaugh's house and today, the story is zip ties. This guy has zip ties who att- attached Paul Pelosi. They didn't seem to care that Brett Kavanaugh's attacker, would-be attacker, had zip ties too, that he was ready to kill Brett Kavanaugh. In fact, what we heard from Nancy Pelosi herself after that was, the justices are protected. They're protected and no one's in danger. The New York Times thought that that story, the attempted attack on Brett Kavanaugh's life, warranted not front page mention, not page two, page 20 They put that on page 20. This time, Paul Pelosi, front page below the fold. Um, In order, by the way, the Brett Kavanaugh threat make uh, the front of the USA Today newspaper, the Chicago Tribune, MSNBC primetime ignored it. It didn't make any one of the Sunday shows except for the Fox News Sunday show. I mean, wall to wall for all those outlets. This one, much bigger, trying to tie it to Republicans writ large, eight days in advance of a midterm. It's no accident. Yeah, and Megan, I, I want to be clear up front. I mean, my position on Paul Pelosi's attacker is my position on, on the would-be assass- assassin of Brett Kavanaugh. We should throw the book at them. But the contrast is stark, as you say. And there are differences in the circumstances as well. Nancy Pelosi is the Speaker of the House. Of course, people are going to campaign against the left-wing ideological agenda that she's promoted in the House of Representatives for all these years. Just like she campaigns against Donald Trump, or back in the day, she campaigned against George Bush. It's a different situation where you're dealing with a Supreme Court justice. It's not normal to single them out for kind of aggressive political campaign style rhetoric. And say Chuck Schumer did on the steps of the Supreme Court when he sent, called out Brett Kavanaugh by name and said that he wouldn't know what hit him if, we went, if he went forward decisions that Chuck Schumer didn't like. Second, there were uh, uh, foreshadowing of this kind of attack on Brett Kavanaugh's home. You had left-wing agitators for weeks protesting outside the homes of conservative Supreme Court justices in direct violation of federal law. Yet Merrick Garland and his politicized Department of Justice refused to enforce this law, refused to arrest these agitators for obvious criminal violations of federal law, thereby sending the message that the United States government was not going to take steps to reinforce security for these justices. So the situation with Brett Kavanaugh is actually more unusual. It's more dangerous. Yet, as you point out, 
The media largely ignored it compared to the attack on Paul Pelosi. Both heinous, both criminals should have the book thrown at them, but the media views them very differently because of their partisan leanings. You know who doesn't have spooky meats? Good ranchers. They deliver America's best meat and seafood to you year-round. No costume of labels, no gimmicks, just great meat that shows up right at your door. Their October Feast special just got even better. You can get up to four pounds of meat for free. You order any box, get over two pounds of their better than organic chicken breast for free. If your order is over 300 bucks worth of delicious meat, you'll also get two pounds of their Wagyu ground beef thrown in as well. Head on over to goodranchers.com slash Megan to claim your special October feast of four free pounds of meat today. Join the tens of thousands of Americans getting 100% American meat delivered right to their door. Store-bought meat can be tainted with scary bacteria and with ghoulish inflated prices. Good Ranchers lets you save $25 on every box and lock in your price when you subscribe. Put an end to your meat buying nightmare by visiting goodranchers.com slash Megan to get over four pounds free of high quality beef and chicken. The real monster isn't under your bed. It's really in your fridge. Take control over your food with an October feast from Good Ranchers, American meat delivered. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.